know, I still remember having the conversation with him, him calling me at work and telling me there was this very scary thing that could cause permanent damage. It was a little rough uh, kind of getting our minds wrapped around the idea that this was actually happening. I'm a runner. Physical activity has always been my outlet, the way that I balance myself out. I was stretching to go for a run and uh, I guess I stretched a little bit too far and I heard something pop in my back and instantly knew something was wrong. Sure. I had an MRI done. I had a slightly herniated disc and uh, a tumor. Initially, um, you know, just finding out, you know, obviously that you have a tumor in your, your spine, it's a very scary thing. And it, that, that fear kind of permeates into everything. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I'm an anxious person by nature. And uh, I felt really uncomfortable with the doctors that we had seen previously. They wanted to cut me open right away. So I was just, I was hesitant to jump into a situation where I didn't have all the information I needed right away. Aaron first came to my clinic uh, in June 2011, and uh, he uh, was diagnosed with a spinal cord tumor. It's called a schwannoma. Uh, it is typically a benign tumor, but in 5% of patients, it's malignant. By the time he came to us, his symptoms had subsided. He had a first opinion where he was told he needed emergent surgery. Uh, and uh, he was told that there's a significant risk of a dorsiflexion weakness or foot drop. Now, a lot of times, if we feel that a tumor is benign, because of the location of the tumor, because of the nerves involved, because of the function and the importance of that function on somebody's ability to walk, let alone run, we may just watch it to see the rate of growth. He said, as long as you're comfortable enough to live your life and do the things that you need to do, work and exercise uh, until it starts to grow and cause more problems, um, we don't need to do the surgery. We'll just monitor it. I wanted to make sure that I gave him an additional five, six, seven years of a working uh, neurological system. After two and a half years of watching this tumor, its symptoms as well as radiographic progression, we had evidence that it had gotten significantly bigger. We decided to proceed with a conversation with him about the need for surgery at that point. But I said to Aaron, we do a lot of these surgeries. People seek us out from all over the world for this kind of care. He made me understand the consequences, the good and the bad of the surgery. Um, he gave me confidence that I was going to be okay or have the best chance that I could possibly have to be okay. The day of the surgery, somebody who is super anxious, uh, the whole trip down to Hopkins that morning, my wife was, kept looking at me and asking if I was okay because I was, I was placid. I was calm. I had a one-year-old son and I was determined to come out of it okay for him. The operation took, uh, I believe, about four and a half, five hours. It went uh, smoothly. Uh, we went around the tumor so we don't injure any of the nerves or any of the functions that was there. We were able to remove the entire tumor and uh, there was no damage to the nerves. As the anesthesia was waking him up, I stood at the side of the bed and I asked him to move his ankle up and down and when he moved it, I felt a lot of relief. Right now, um, I feel great. My, I feel like my life is back to where it was. I, I'm not perfect after a surgery like that, but I can touch my toes standing up. Um, I'm back to running almost as much as I was running before. We've watched it for the past year, year and a half, and things are looking very stable, and there's no need for radiation and no need for any adjuvant therapy. Right before the surgery, I was just very nervous that I wouldn't be able to be the kind of father that I wanted to be for my son. We have a second son now. We had him six weeks ago. I can be the kind of father I want to be, so everything's good. Everything's good.